Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Happy St. Patrick's Day. We're Sorry, festive Taylor. today. Even though we can't see you guys, hopefully you're wearing some green. Awesome. I do have my green on today. I do have my, you probably can't tell, but I do have my sparkly shamrock earrings on just a and I did actually decorate my office with a little bit of uh, St. Patrick's Day stuff. It sort of got away from me this year. It seemed to have sort of snuck up on me this year. So, <laughs> all right. So it looks like we got a few more people. We had uh, over 40 people register. So we got a few more people just popping in right now. Um, so might as well do a little housekeeping here. Um, first and foremost, my name is Colleen DeLang. I am an instructor for my real source and a little bit about me is I've been a licensed realtor for 22 years now. It makes me feel very old when I say it that way. Um, but Taylor and I are going to take you on a tour of how to put your listings in. Um, and we're going to show you some time saving tips and techniques when doing listing entry when, you know, the sun shines right through the blinds at this very moment. Um, but we're going to show you how to put your listings in and how to basically uh, pull more information from things like the tax records so you don't have to put as much information in. We're going to show you some hidden secrets like how to use a data form and upload all your information to Paragon. And of course, if you don't know Taylor, Taylor, you should introduce yourself too since we have so many on the call. Yeah, we had a lot of people registered for this class, um, so I'm sure a few more will be popping on here shortly. But <clears throat> good morning. My name is Taylor. I do our communications here at my real source as well as teach the photography classes, uh, market stats class, and this class now. So, um, which I love that I get to be in on another uh, class with Colleen. I also we also together do our mixing it up, so we cover a lot of um, unique topics e each month based on some suggestions that members give or things that are kind of relevant to the industry right now. <clears throat> Um, and this whole class is basically going to give you the run through of creating a listing from A to Z. So what you need to know, everything that um, revolves around entering the listing, auto pop, photos, captions, descriptions to marketing your listing after the fact. Um, so we got a, a lot of stuff to, to share with you today. Um, so grab your coffee, your water, and uh, just let us know too. Maybe we should have started with this. Let us know that you can hear us okay and see us okay. There is a chat or a question section. I will be keeping the question section open. Um, I'll look at the chat too, but if you have anything to add or any questions or anything that you want us to repeat or show again, go ahead and use that questions uh, panel that's right there. Open that up and type in your question. Goes uh, privately to us, I believe usually. Um, so you can feel free to use that as needed. Um, but let us know you can hear us and see us before we actually dive in. Um, please, if one somebody. Person yeah, if, if somebody could go into that questions box real quick and just want to make sure that you're able to see us and hear us okay, we can go ahead and get started. <clears throat> Nothing worse than being five minutes in and somebody's like, oh, you have no sound. Thank you so much, Laura. Thank you, Christine. Yeah. Looks like you can see us and hear us okay. So as Taylor mentioned, if you have any questions throughout the demonstration today, just type them in that questions box. We want you to really be a listing expert uh, after this class. We want to show you again some time-saving tips and techniques to get your listings in quickly, uh, where you need to go to get all the information to prepare for your listing. We're also going to show you some uh, software cheats, like uh, as a My Real Source member, you get uh, BSNA. Uh, records at no cost for Macomb County, Genesee County, and all five of the gross points. We're going to show you how to prepare for your listing, get all the listing information, and then how to click a button, pull it all over into your listing forms, click another button and create your listing. So it's just a couple clicks. And uh, obviously we want to make it very quick for you to list homes because we're all very short of inventory. Um, so go out there and list, 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 and let's uh, get started with that. So I'm going to turn off my fuzzy hair just so you can kind of see more of the screen and what we're going to be covering today. So, uh, Taylor, are you able to uh, see my screen at this point? Yes, I am. 
All right, perfect. So where we're going to start today is really preparing for your listing appointment. Where do you go to get all the information? We had a lot of new people that signed up for this class. So I know when I was taking my first listing, I was like, okay, well, how do I prepare for the listing appointment? And really, there are two things that you want to do to prepare. You want to get all the information from two sources. One being realist, which is your tax records. But realist also shows you things like if the property's been in foreclosure before. Um, it will show you if it's currently in sheriff sale. It'll show you what it closed at, what kind of financing. Um, but you also want to trust the BFNA record, which is the actual municipality record, because that's the trusted source. By the way, if you are ever to get into a legal uh, situation, a judge will look at BSNA because it is one single source. It is the trusted municipality. And my real source does something very unique that other MLSs don't do. We use the live BSNA server. Um, and what that means is that the city assessor makes a change. Um, that change is immediately available for you to see. And I'll tell you why this becomes important. I had a uh, client who had a few thousand dollars worth of unpaid property taxes. Unfortunately, it wasn't discovered till very close to our closing date. So they went down to the city, they paid it, and we were actually able to see, because it was the live BSNA server, we could see the next day that it had been paid, so we, it allowed us to be able to close. Um, so it's really important if you're using something that's a feed and it's only going out every several days, well, that's not so good because in this case, we wouldn't have been able to close. So we use the live BSNA server, so you're getting up to the minute records. Um, and BSNA is actually, as I mentioned, the trusted source because it's coming right from the municipality. Realist combines the municipality information, but it also takes into account some MLS information. So what you're actually seeing on your screen right now um, is just a listing that I recently closed. So we're going to use this as a, a good example. So if this seller said, you know what, hey, can you come to my house and, uh, you know, tell me what my home is worth? I want to start doing my homework. You know, I want to see is there city assessments maybe that are due? Um, you know, what, what's going on with this property? How many bedrooms does it have? How many bathrooms? What's the square footage? Is it on a basement? Does it have a garage? So obviously the first thing I want to do is I want to go into the MLS and I want to find out has that property ever closed before? Um, that's also going to show you how long ago it closed. I can see the closing date. I can see who closed it. I can see who was the listing agent. Um, all of that is shared here. The next thing I want to do is I now want to go in and there are these colorful quick action icons right here. So the first thing I want to do, and, and I'm just going to apologize, uh, it kind of looks like a trash can. My apologies. It's a government pillar. Um, when Brian kind of smushed the government pillar down to put it on the button, kind of came out looking a little bit more, unfortunately, like a trash can and less like a government pillar. So I apologize about that. But this little end button that you see right here, this is going to allow you to go directly into the BSNA record for this specific property. Now, what's really nice about these quick action links, instead of having to log out of the MLS, log into BSNA, find the municipality, click and put in the address information, this is going to take me directly into that BSNA record. By the way, it's also going to waive the fee if that municipality charges a fee because you are a member of my real source you get that fee waived. Now, don't get me wrong, BSNA, they still charge us. They send my real source the bill for you as a my real source member. So the nice thing is it's saving you a couple dollars here and a couple dollars there. But as you can see, we now went right into the BSNA record. We can see when this home was built. So I can start doing my comparative market analysis, my CMA, because I now have when the property was built, how many bedrooms, what's the square footage, does it have acreage, you can see I can already start building the information that I'm going to use to select my comps. And as we scroll down, we're going to see the owner information. Obviously, if you're meeting with someone to uh, prepare your listing, you do want to make sure that they own the property, because by the way, that has happened before where they're renting and they're trying to sell the home. Um, if you scroll down, you're also going to see things like um, the frontage that you're going to need to input your listing, the legal, lengthy legal description, 
as we scroll down, here's where it gets good. So here's where we can start seeing um, the sale history. So I can see that this went into an estate situation. Um, actually, this was my grandmother's home, so that's how I know that. But you can see it right here under uh, terms of sale. You can also see here generally if it's gone into foreclosure. Um, I'm going to show you how to even find out if they've recently refied. But if you scroll down a little further, I can see that it does, in fact, have a basement. It is a brick home. It does have a two-car attached garage. Um, so all of this information is helping me build my comps. Now, what I recommend you do, too, on this is I actually go in and I save this. So I just print this generally as a PDF. Um, I save this so that when I'm doing my CMA, I can have this as my second or third page um, of my CMA so I can show them where I got all the information. Um, it will also have your tax information, which of course is required to put an, a listing in the MLS. Um, and then also if there are assessments, um, so if assessments were due on the property, let's say that they um, have just broken up the sidewalk uh, and there's going to be a $2,000 assessment that that homeowner is going to have to pay. Generally, you can see those here, too. I recently listed a property in Warren and there was a $700 outstanding water bill that popped up. So many of the municipalities will even have the water. Remember, water is attached to the property. So if you're going to sit down and talk to that seller and do a seller's net out, and you're going to tell that seller, okay, you're going to end up with this amount in your pocket, and there's a $1,000 water bill, or in this case, a $700 water bill, that's directly going to impact that seller's bottom line. Um, I also recently uh, listed a condo in Sterling Heights and the homeowner did not know she had to uh, homestead the property. Her mother had passed away, so she purchased it um, and she had never homesteaded it and she had never paid the property taxes, unfortunately. So when I did the net out, I had to show her there's $5,000 worth of outstanding property taxes. This, of course, directly impacted her bottom line. But the nice thing is, as we were going through this, the seller and I had the conversation about homesteaded. I realized the property was not homesteaded. We went down to the city together and they actually homesteaded it and rebated. So instead of owing a big amount, she owed a much, much smaller amount. So these are all things that you want to be checking and you want to be preparing when you're taking a listing. So again, you're going to check that BSNA record. And that was simple. All I did is go to that uh, I apologize again, it looks like a trash can. It went to that trash can icon that opens up that BSNA record. Now, another little cheat sheet here, uh, add this to your cheat sheet. If you um, are doing a cloud CMA or you're doing a CMA now for this property, these um, public record photos are great if you're looking for a cover. Uh, what I do, and I, I have to say, I'm always looking for the easy button, especially if I haven't driven out to this property, right? So what I can do is I can actually pull up this photo, right click on the photo and do a save image as. Now, even though I haven't driven over to the property, I am actually using this photo as my front cover in Cloud CMA. So great ways to get all gathering all this information for my listing appointment. Um, now, I will tell you what I generally do is I'll go ahead and crop it. Now, you cannot do that with MLS photos. So let me just kind of clarify. We always have a couple people say, well, it was listed before. I'll just take the MLS photo. Remember, uh, and Taylor can actually talk more about that, you cannot use someone else's photos. The person who clicked the shutter, I believe it is, Taylor, uh, actually owns that photo and you do not want to violate uh, copyright law. You don't want to steal someone's photos. Um, and so it's very important if you use a public photo, like in BSNA, that's there for everyone to use, but never use an agent's photo from the MLS. Use this photo. So again, I can go in, simply blow that up, right click on it, save that image, and that can be the front cover of my cloud CMA, which ends up looking so nice. All right, so going back to Paragon, so of course I want to prepare using BSNA. That is the trusted source. That's, of course, the most important record. But the other thing I want to do is <clears throat> I want to check the realist record. Now, realist in Paragon is identified as this little red icon here. If I click on realist, 
that's going to take me into the realist record again for that particular property. Now, why I bring this up is, again, if the property is in foreclosure or sheriff sale, um, I can scroll down. I can, of course, see all the information for, again, the, the um, uh, square footage, the basement, uh, the garage. I can see, you know, it, yes, it was um, uh, on, a, on a basement with an attached garage. What's that square footage? But down here, again, it will also show you if refis were done and it will show you the mortgage information. So this person, when I sold it, um, actually purchased it with an FHA loan, um, who the mortgage lender was. So a lot of, if they were quick claimed, again, if it was a sheriff sale, if it's gone into foreclosure, that information is all listed here within Realist. And again, I usually click the print button here. I save this as a PDF and I bring this into my cloud CMA report. The reason that I do that is because one, I want to show that I did my homework because I, of course I want to walk away with that listing. Um, the second reason I do that is it also is good risk mitigation for me. I can show at the time I listed the property exactly what was going on with that property. So if there's unpaid property uh, taxes, I can show that I pointed that out to them. Generally, I even highlight them um, you know, in your CMA. And it just, it really then brings up all that important information that you've gone through. If you have not used Cloud CMA before, you're gonna find that under resources. By the way, Cloud is one of my favorite tools. I have to say it's easy, makes a super presentation, um, and it's it's it allows you to bring in all of those custom pieces. So if I go into Cloud CMA, because again, we're doing a listing A to Z, right? If I go into, let me find that particular, um, find that particular listing that we just used, um, I can see that I not only did I give them all of that BSNA information, but everything is there. So actually, I'll use this one. This is that condo I was just telling you about with the unpaid property taxes. These are all things that you can bring in, make them part of your CMA. So I'm just going to go ahead and show this a little bigger so you can see it. This was the actual picture, by the way, that was in BSNA. I did not drive to the property ahead of time. I pulled what was already there. Um, again, I use great tools like Market Stats. Uh, Taylor teaches a great lead generation class and a great Market Stats class that I was able to sit there with that seller and show that seller that they were 60% down in inventory when I did this. Um, and we had 219 homes on the market in 2019 uh, and only 90 when we actually listed the property. And look what it did to our average sales price. We went from 193 to 223. So when she's asking me, well, where should we, uh, you know, put this price range? Uh, you've given me a price range. Where should I list it? Well, obviously, we want to do it on the high side, right? Because we're down 60% in inventory and we're seeing things go for, on average, about $30,000 more. Um, so that's going to help us educate our seller, too. Of course, I bring in my closed record. Here's that realist record that we mentioned. Again, my BSNA record is here. This also was how I showed her. As you can see, this was a the reason I chose this one is it's a really good example. Do you see where it said pay delinquent taxes? This alerted me that she had almost seven thousand dollars worth of unpaid property taxes. This is how we had that discussion. I did her net sheet, and she was like, "Wow, that's a lot." That's when we realized it wasn't homesteaded. We went down to the city. But these are all things you're going to want to clue that homeowner in on. Also, I mentioned that water stays with the property. So as you can see, the water bill was red, and you could see that the water balance was paid. That was also important. So those are all great things that we're checking. I bring all of those into cloud because it's a great way to make sure that you walk away with the listing. Um, and that allows me to take it to the next step. So now we've done a great presentation. Um, there's a whole class, by the way, on Cloud CMA. We'll walk you through it kind of like this, A to Z. We'll show you how to pull in the property information and do a really super impressive presentation. 
from there, now I've got my information, I've done my, my homework, but now I want to, of course, fill out those listing forms because when I'm at my listing appointment, I want them to sign right then and there. So how do I now go in and fill out those listing forms and then use the, after the listing form is filled out, I want to push all that information into Paragon to create my listing. So to do that, what we want to do now is we want to go into resources. Kind of think of resources as your toolbox, if you will. Um, basically, everything with the exception of taxes is located in the toolbox. Um, so now I'm ready to go ahead and fill out those forms. So I'm going to go to resources and find the section labeled online forms. I'm going to click on that. And now I'm going to start my listing. Now, a couple of things to note here. Um, so I'm going to jump over to my files. I'm going to start a brand new listing. So I'm going to go up to the uh, add button. And I simply want to give my listing a name. Now, I do recommend always uh, naming it after the property address because it's much easier to find. If you name it after the client and Bob Smith uses you for multiple transactions, it can be a little bit harder to uh, find. So I'm going to name this uh, 41539 Wessel. If you do want to use a client name, I would do a hyphen and then the client name so you can still quickly identify it. But now what I want to do is I want to apply my listing packet. Now, hopefully you or your broker have already set up a listing package that's going to have all the forms that you need in order to complete that listing. So I'm going to click on listing package. And then here's the big difference. Normally, if you're on the purchase side, you're pulling from the MLS because it's a listed property. But in this case, I don't want to have to fill out a bunch of information. I literally want to go in and pull the information that we just looked at for the property, right from the municipality or right from Realist. So I'm going to click on Realist. But here is your second sheet. So you want to write this one down. And by the way, I think I don't know if we mentioned we are recording this class. So if you forget anything, because we're going to cover a lot today and Taylor does such a great job with the photos and you're going to want to take a lot of notes for that. But if you miss anything, we are recording this class and you can watch it right on our YouTube channel. We're going to give you all that information uh, before we're done. So you can go back and watch this as many times as you need to. So I'm going to say, OK, I'm pulling it in from the property record. But I don't know the tax ID, right? I mean, you'd have to go look all that stuff up. I want to make this easy. What I do know is I do know the address. So what your first cheat is to go over to this little magnifying glass, if you will. You're going to click the county that your listing is going to be in. So I'm going to say that I am listing a property in Macomb County. So that's where this is. I'm going to put in just the street number and the root street name. So what I mean by that is if you fill out all this additional information, most probably you're going to get an error because it's very exact. When you're trying to match tax records, this happens to be Wessel Drive. If I spell out drive and the tax record is actually DR period, I'm not going to pull the information. So what I want to do is I want to put in the least amount of information. I want to put in only the county, only the street number and the root street name. So I don't want to put in the drives, the ways, the places, or the cities or zip codes. Leave all of that out. What I want to do now is hit search tax data. Immediately, it's going to find that record. You can see it's very quick. I'm going to check it off. Yep, that's the address. And I want to start my transaction right from there. Now I'm going to go ahead and click Create. And basically, I'm taking all the great forms that my broker said that we are required to use for creating a listing, and it's going to start auto-filling all of that data for me. So as you can see, it now brought over the street number, street name, city, county, lengthy legal description, tax number, all of that's coming over for me. If I jump over to step three, it even takes the owner uh, of record and pulls them in. So if I'm using transaction desk or maybe I'm even having them e-sign everything with AuthentiSign, it knows exactly who the seller is, 
It loads their name onto the listing contracts and it even tags where the seller is supposed to sign. So it does a whole bunch of cool stuff for you. If I jump over into step four here though, this is my favorite part. If I go into the data sheet, so my real source has a data sheet and whether you're with one of our vendor partners, by the way, doesn't matter. You're still gonna use the My Real Source data sheet because it's gonna do something very cool for you. I'm a big fan of the data sheet because I think it's the easiest way to load mass amounts of data. Um, and I think it's very easy to read. What I mean, and I'm just gonna show you real quick what I mean. If I go down to the features, uh, specifically features because it's just laid out really, really easy. Room sizes, that's another good example. But especially features, when you are taking a new listing and you're filling out all these intricate features, I find this a lot easier to do it on the data sheet than to do it actually in Paragon. Now, let me also say many offices have the admins enter the listing, and that's fine. But what that means is I'm actually going in, filling out the data sheet, printing off the data sheet, handing it over to my admin, and now she's expected to rekey 300 fields of information. Wouldn't it be nice if you could just click a button and all of that was done or sent to your admin? Or if you put your own listings in, it can even send the information to Paragon for you. That's exactly what this does. So, so I'm kind of going through the data sheet just to, so you can kind of see it. It's laid out in a nice, easy format. I love it because I can just check, check, check right down the, and it just makes it so much easier. If I were to do the features in Paragon, so let me just jump over here for one second. So let's say, I'm just gonna grab uh, my listing to just kind of show it to you. Uh, what is it, 1871, oh, I think it is. Um, if I were to do this in Paragon, and I'm going to do it on my own listing just so I don't mess up anybody else's here. When you are going in and you are adding in the features and the um, information within Paragon, you're, you have to open each section, which isn't a big deal. You can hit expand all, but it's a lot smaller and it's a lot more difficult to read, I think. So here's how you would enter the listing directly into Paragon if you weren't using the data sheet. So when I'm talking about the feature section, let me just kind of show it. And you can do it either way. I'm going to show you how to do it both ways. But you can see each one of these features, it's a lot harder to know exactly what's supposed to go in this feature code. I got to go over here to the right. I got to expand it. Now I got to check it off. It's much smaller. So for me, this was not an easy plus. I'm going to be totally honest. I've been doing this 22 years. Some of these, I don't even know what it means. I mean, the ZR type, I got to go in over here to the right and I got to actually look up what the heck are you asking me for? It's not as simple as going right through the data sheet. As I mentioned on the data sheet, everything is laid out and properly labeled. So it's a lot easier to quickly insert all of the information. Now, again, as I mentioned, one of the key things here is that if your admin puts them in, this is still going to work for you. Now, the most important thing here is that you fill out everything in red. So anything that is labeled in red is required. Um, so if I go up to that first sheet, obviously, I need to know the sales price, the city. I mean, basic stuff, right? I'm not going to take the time to fill all this out. I'm just going to pretend for a moment that we filled all the red out. And I'm going to go to this upload listing button. All right, so here's basically what's happening behind the scenes. Behind the scenes, it is creating a partial listing for you. And the reason it does a partial listing versus a uh, full on listing uh, where it just is active right away is we want you to add your photos first. And the reason for that is photos um, I'll throw my camera on for a second just to kind of explain this, but um, photos work like this. Uh, if you are putting a new listing in and you don't have photos, and let's say it's going out to IDX sites like Zillow and Realtor.com and all these other that your broker syndicates to, right? Mm -hmm. And you haven't put those photos in. It kind of works like a bus stop, if you will. So let's say you put your listing in, you didn't add the photos, but 10 minutes later, you've now added your photos in, okay? That means it could be up to two full days 
before those photos get added to those other IDX sites. And why that is, is, uh, and Taylor's gonna talk about this too, because we got some exciting things coming up with um, uh, high resolution photos. But basically photos are high res, and you now can put 99 photos in for your listing. That means that it slows things down when they're pulling these huge files. So places like Zillow and other IDX vendors generally only pull them every 24 to 48 hours. That means it doesn't slow their system down because they're not doing it all the time. The problem is it works like a bus. If you put the listing in and uh, you added your photos a couple minutes later, here comes the bus, okay, your listing photos are there. But think how angry your sellers would be if it's two full days before that listing displays their photos, right? So it becomes uh, kind of an issue. So we want you to add those photos in before you hit save on your listing. Um, another thing is if you, whether you're using the Real Comp portal or you're using the Collaboration Center, whatever you're using for prospecting, if you put it in with no photos, that's how it's displayed immediately to any client who's looking for a home with that criteria. So that means technically your client could be seeing it with no photos. Then they just jump to the next one where there is photos. So you don't want to do that. And that's why we want you to make it a partial, then go in, add your photos, and then make it a live listing. So hopefully that, hopefully my bus scenario helped a little bit. Oh, Taylor, do we have a question? Uh, let me double check and see real quick. <clears throat> there was one, but I answered it privately, so it should be, it doesn't look like there's any more questions. But I did okay. add in the chat where they can find this recording, because it is a lot of content, as you mentioned, um, on our YouTube channel. And you mentioned the photos. I also put links in the chat to uh, the upcoming photos classes that I teach. And that's a great class. I was lucky enough to uh, take that class with Taylor and Taylor has a degree in photography. So she's not just someone who walked in off the street and is trying to teach you to take better pictures of your listing. If you haven't taken that specialty class, I can't recommend it enough. I mean, she shows you these great tips and tricks like, you know, especially in like small powder rooms. I learned the most in that. And I, I see I can tell a lot of people have taken her class because I see her signature photo that she teaches you to do kind of off the counter reflecting into the mirror to make the bathroom look bigger and show the entire bathroom. So many times in those little powder rooms, you get the picture and it's like front and center of the toilet. That's all you see because it's a small room. Um, and she shows you how to take better photos, how to use um, angled shots so that you don't have that and you can still show how beautiful the bathroom is. Um, so I was, if you haven't taken that class, it's awesome. And it's free to you. It's specialty class. Only Taylor teaches it. Um, and but she's going to talk more about that. I can't say enough good things about it, though. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> you can tell I'm kind of a fan, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So from here, um, we we now want to create uh, we, we filled out our data sheet. So just to kind of where we are, because I know we're going over a lot of information. We filled out our data sheet. We've put in all of our requireds. We click the upload. So where does it go? Well, it goes into Paragon under the listing section, but it's not an active listing yet, as I mentioned. We got one more thing we got to do. We got to add in those great photos. So now what we've done is we have created a partial listing. Now, the cool thing is if you are, and there's a lot of brokerages like this, so I just want to put this out there. There's a lot of brokerages who are very afraid that their agents are going to get fined. So the only person allowed at the brokerage to make a listing live is the admin. So your admins, so, and I'm logged in as an admin right now, the admins have a button that says office listings, and they can see all the partials for the entire office. So instead of you filling out this data sheet and then printing it off and then telling the admin, okay, enter all these fields that I've already entered, isn't it a lot more efficient? And quite honestly, uh, I think it's just a lot better all the way around. I one time had a vacant land listing that was only $47,000. But of course, and I, have, I had great admins, nothing against admins, but they had 400 other agents that they were servicing to. They were answering the phone and they were trying to rekey this and it went in as $470,000. So it's remember. a lot. <laughs> Yeah, it was a little, lot more pricey for uh, this uh, piece of land that needed a lot of work. 
So the idea is you want, instead of them having to rekey everything, you can simply push it over to them. So where it actually ends up for them is they can see all of the partials. They can now go in, open up that partial, add your photos and hit save to make it live. But if you do your own listings, which I do, so I'm gonna say, um, I went into my partials, so I'm only going to see my partials here. I'm now going to open up that partial. So I'm just going to click on that MLS number here. Now I can go in, I can add the photos, and Taylor's going to take you all through that. I can add things like the photos, the disclosures, if I've got an upcoming open house. And I can save the listing to make it live and active in the MLS. Or maybe I went on the listing appointment, I got it all ready to go, and they called and said, you know what, Colleen, we think we're going to paint the living room. We're going to list it next month. We can also go ahead and resave the partial. Now, it does save it for 180 days, so I can keep saving it as a partial for as long as I need. Um, so if I've got it in there, it'll give me an alert saying that it's about to expire, and I can save it for another 180 days. Hopefully, it won't take them that long to paint, um, but it allows you to go in and keep making those saves. All right. Um, now, if you don't use the data sheet, okay, and you still want to input it directly into Paragon. So again, my preferred way is to go into Transaction Desk, use the My Rule Source data sheet, which hopefully is part of your listing packet. Click that upload listing button, send everything over into the MLS, making it very easy to do what Taylor's going to show you. Um, add photos, captions, descriptions, promote it. She's going to show you all the fun stuff. Um, but if you're not using Transaction Desk or you don't want to use this form, you can still enter your listing directly into Paragon. And no matter what, even if you're with our vendor MLSs, you can still pull from the tax records. So I'm going to go over to uh, Paragon over here and I'm going to say, okay, I'm not using transaction dots, but I'm ready to put my listing in. So I'm going to this time go into the listing sections again, just like where you found your partials, but this time I'm going to add a new listing. But of course I don't want to add it in and add in all that information. I want to be able to pull from the tax records. So I'm creating a new listing but I'm going to go to the tax autofill button. I'm going to click on tax autofill. And I'm simply going to do kind of those same steps that we did for the data sheet. I'm going to go into Macomb County where this listing is. By the way, I noticed we had a few people from uh, the Bay County Realtor Association. So you're going to do the same thing. I got a question from their AE uh, this morning. Same process. Um, you're going to go in, you're going to enter things like the house number and the street name. Remember, same concept, less is best here. You're going to enter the county, the house number, and the street name. And then you're going to hit search. The same concept, I'm pulling in from the tax information. So here's our address. I can see, yep, that's the right address. I'm going to go ahead and check it off. And I'm simply going to do the autofill. The autofill is going to, again, pull up that tax record. And if there's something I don't want to autofill, let's say that, um, you know, I know the summer taxes weren't paid or something like that. I can go ahead and uncheck it. I can hit save. And I'm now pulling in those fields directly into the listing. So if I go now down to the property information here. You can see that auto population is starting to flow. The county, the address, the lengthy legal description, the subdivision, all of that information is carrying over. Year built, acreage. Now I'm ready to fill in anything additional and then I can go ahead and obviously uh, go into the photos and things of that nature. All right, so I took you on a long tour. Um, we covered a lot. Remember, this is kind of an overview. So there's a class on every single thing. You want to know how to be better in cloud? There's a class on that. You want to know how to do listings more efficiently as far as paperwork? There's a transaction desk and authentication class. There's pretty much classes for uh, everything we covered here so far. And as Taylor mentioned, we're going to show you exactly where to get to the YouTube channel. Um, but with this, I'm going to turn it over to Taylor because she's going to take you through the really important parts, uh, what you need to know about adding photos, what you need to know about 
uh, um, adding captions and descriptions, how to promote your property. So now you're getting lots of views on it. So Taylor, I'm going to um, bounce presenter over to you now, if that's okay. Okay, sounds great. <clears throat> all right all right are you guys able to see my screen right now colleen I are you do. i guess <laughs> i do not oh now you i do, do. okay I do now. yeah yeah i think i might have been on another window or something so okay you, know, those, you use two monitors or fancy so sometimes that <laughs> well the the macs allow you to kind of toggle between windows so that's what um kind of works like kind of works like multiple monitors, but um, gotcha, okay. it's a little confusing with the webinars sometimes. So, <laughs> all um, right. So let me um, minimize myself so I don't have to look at myself while I'm talking. I know that is the one thing I don't like about GoToWebinar. I don't like when I'm staring at myself. So I just yeah. turn my camera off. It yeah. <laughs> all right. So um, as Colleen mentioned, now you've added the listing into Paragon, whether you did that from your um, auto pop from Realist or you manually keyed that in. Now, what do you do? She briefly mentioned that you should be saving your listing as a partial. Thankfully, it automatically does if you were to bring that over from Transaction Desk as um, a partial when it gets plugged into Paragon. But if you were to manually key this in, or you wanted to um, access your partial, it's very simple. You simply go to listings and maintain partials. So just to repeat Colleen a little bit and go into a little bit more detail on the importance of a partial listing is you are going to want to do these partials because of the way the data flows from the MLS to other sources. So when you put that listing in live without saving it as a partial and you don't have it perfected from your captions, your descriptions, things I'm going to be showing you, um, the, all the photos that you want to be adding to it, any kind of marketing materials like links, um, your, which I'm going to be showing you branded, unbranded links, you are now sending that to IDX sites with only a single photo. You are also sending that to all syndicated sites like Realtor.com. And then, even more importantly, in my opinion, is anybody who has a client set up in the MLS for a search, they are only going to get that listing push as a new listing one time. So they'll get a notification as soon as that's live that a new listing hit the market. And then they're only seeing one photo. So you're marketing that photo with just the bare minimum and they get that new listing alert. And that would be through the, the portal and collaboration center. So that's really not doing a service to your sellers. You want to have all that material um, in, in the listing. You wanna have those photos, that those descriptions. And when it is saved as a live right away, that is how it's pulled and it's quick. Now, if you were to then go back and edit the listing, what that, that feed sees is a listing um, media file update. And that can take anywhere from 48, up to 48 hours. So you put that listing in, saved it live right away with one photo and no tours, no anything like that. And now you're going in a few hours later and adding the remaining photos. 48 hours later is when that client might see a change, but they are not going to get a notification that now 30 photos have been added. So you want to always save it as a partial, whether you added it yourself right into Paragon, whether you auto-populated and pushed it to Paragon as a partial, of course it would be there as a partial, um, or you have an admin keying that in. You want, um, you want he or she to then save that as a partial for then you to go in and make those final little touches before it goes live. So I went into the partial function and I went into maintain partials. So that's where my partial, my partial listing is. I'm going to open that up, and this is where I can maintain that listing. So 
these are all the data fields. Many of them would be pushed over from Realist, which was what Colleen was showing you from Transaction Desk, your data entry form, then gets pushed over. So you can go through, look at all these fields, use VSNA as your reference as well. And now, once that is complete, you go to the Add and Edit Photos. What's really nice is you can upload multiple photos as, at a time. We do have high resolution photos for the web, but I'm excited to announce that we will be getting even higher res. Right now we have 1280 by 960. You can upload up to 99 photos, but we're going to be upping the resolution, um, actually almost tripling it. It's going to be three, uh, the resolution will be 3072 by 2304. Now, I know I'm just throwing numbers at you, but the quality of that photo is going to be a lot sharper, a lot um, larger on the screen, and you'll be able to zoom in, see more detail. There's not gonna be any blur or anything like that. This will be the highest in the state, which is really exciting. Um, so that should be coming here shortly, but we still have really high res um, that will be, that is syndicated out, put into the collaboration center, your single property website, all these things that I'm gonna be showing you. Now, when you upload your photos, you just simply hit add, add files. You can then upload, whether it's 10 photos or 99 photos, whatever works for you. Now, the one thing that I will say, I'm gonna give you a few tips in uh, photography and some stuff that I recommend. I did add my classes that are coming up as a reference for you guys too, if you wanted to attend that class where I go into some of this stuff as well as, a, you know, it's a full blown photography program in a way. Um, but what I do stress is quality over quantity. Just because it has 99 photos doesn't mean you add 99, doesn't mean you add 50. It really depends on the listing. And you have about 10 photos to get their attention right off the bat. So the flow of the photos is also really important. So my favorite thing um, about Paragon is the captions and descriptions as well as the drag and drop feature. So when you are archiving your photos, let's say that you went to a listing and you took 100 photos. You're going to use 40 of those, of those 100. Um, after they've been uploaded, you can rearrange them in the in your preferred order. Now, some tips that I recommend for the order that you should put them in, given that you have about 10 photos to get somebody's attention right off the bat. So you don't wanna have a bunch of repetitive photos at the beginning. You wanna have some of the um, really nice selling features, but most importantly, you also want to have that flow where they're experiencing the listing as if they were to be walking home, walking into their home or doing a tour. So the style of those um, or the flow of those photos should be the primary photo. Now, if the home has some really nice selling features outside like a pool or lakefront property on a bunch of land with a pole barn, things like that, or in a really cute community near downtown. Of course, if you have a nice photo of um, those features, go ahead and add one of those as well up front, but you don't wanna have you know, seven photos of just the front yard, the front of the house, different angles, because they really wanna get to the meat and potatoes of this listing to decide if this is the home for them. So go ahead and add that you know, one or two extra nice feature photo at the beginning, but then they should experience this listing as if they're walking through the home. So the front of the home, then they're going to be in the entry piece. So whether that's a mud room or whether that is the foyer or it's just the front part of the home um, or, you know, the, the front door part of the home, then you're going to go to the main living space. So that would be the living room or the kitchen. It, I recommend doing it as whatever one is closest to as they walk in. So if they kind of walk in and it really opens up to that kitchen right there first, and then the living room is off over to the side, then do the kitchen. So they're experiencing that as they would be coming home. When you do that, you're gonna move on to the next living space, maybe do some close-up photos mixed into there, the um, cover the whole main level, 
then you're going to go to the bedrooms, master bedroom, and then following bedrooms. The bathroom that pairs with that bed with that bedroom, that bathroom that pairs with that bedroom, should then follow the photos for that room. Make your way downstairs to a basement, take those photos that are necessary, and then complete the listing with the garage and the backyard photos. So they're getting that full experience going through the home, telling that story. Now, how do I tell a story more so than just putting them in a specific order? Well, you have captions and descriptions. So to decide the order with some of those tips that I gave you, you can simply drag and drop. You can then go into the view report to kind of go through those photos and see what that experience is, which I'll be showing you in a moment. Once you have the order of the photos simply rearranged in the order that you want, you can hit save. So don't worry about hitting save here because all this is doing is saving the photos section. It's not saving the listing and making that live. Um, go in and add your captions and your descriptions. Simply click. Your caption or label is gonna be 25 characters and your description can be actually up to 255 characters, which is really nice. Now, you don't need to write multiple paragraphs or anything like that, but I do strongly suggest adding one to two sentences where you are selling that those features in that home or selling that experience of coming home to this, to this house where they'll see it in the photos or maybe there's a few little things that you can highlight that maybe the photo doesn't show, um, you know, giving them that, that tour as if you were walking with them and pointing things out. You can do that in the captions and descriptions. These captions and descriptions get syndicated out. They'll be displayed on our single property website as well. So when you share that, send that out, um, put that on social media, those captions and descriptions will be there. Many of these features that you might add in the captions and descriptions are also in your data fields or your remarks, but it's they're the first thing that people click on is what? The photos. So you might as well get their attention right off the bat pointing these things out to them. Another thing that you can do, which I think is really helpful, especially um, given most, not most, but I would say majority are taking photos of their listings with their smartphones. So the newer smartphones, the Pro Maxes on the iPhones have a have three lens um, have these three lenses where you can actually get more wide angle shots, which is really nice. So a lot of agents are starting to take some photos with uh, the smartphones versus maybe a point and shoot or a DSLR camera, and that's awesome because the quality is great. You get the wide angle, but sometimes the orientation will flip when you're taking the photo. So when you save that photo, or you were to airdrop this onto your computer, or however you were going to do that, you uh, might get a photo that the orientation is upside down. So what's nice is because it was taken with a phone and perhaps the orientation was flipped, you can just hit that little red pen and you can change the orientation. Kind of help, helpful there. So you don't have to do it in, um, the program, the photo program that's maybe on your computer or go into a, an outside one that you maybe pay for just to simply change the orientation. Um, you can crop your photo as well. I know this comes in handy when little things sneak into the corner that you maybe didn't notice or you aren't familiar with editing software. So you can easily just crop something um, that maybe would look a little bit nicer if it had a little a slight crop done to it. So I've added my captions, I've added my descriptions, and set the um, order of the photos. Now I kind of want to give you guys just an idea of that flow, as well as some tips for adding your captions and descriptions. <clears throat> now, when you were to, when you go in, it will show the photo until you add your cur the cursor over that, and that then puts a little description that you type so it doesn't take up the whole photo or anything like that. You can move your cursor. So anybody that gets this sent over like in a gallery view from Paragon, that's their experience as well. They browse through these 
Now, as you can see, my captions, some of them are longer than others. So I put, you know, front of home, pretty straightforward, but a stunning two-story home in ABC community with three-car garage and circle drive, circle driveway, great for entertaining. So you're just pointing out those things um, and kind of highlighting like how nice that is, which I'm sure many of you have already done when you go to the home with with the uh, client to show them and be like, oh, this is a nice feature. Um, or if you are at an open house and you can point these things out. So just apply that here in your captions and your descriptions. Here's that experience of coming home to the property as well as the flow of walking into the home. So the way I did this one is I decided to do it, for one, a mudroom is a huge selling feature. So I decided to do this from the experience walking in from the garage versus the front door foyer. So that's all just your personal preference. But I put the mudroom, an extremely useful mudroom with custom built-in bench and hangers for backpacks, purses, briefcases, and more. An office space for bills and receipts, allowing your kitchen counters to be free of clutter, which is a really nice feature, as well as a large walk-in pantry and coat closet. So now we're going through a couple different angles of specific rooms that I want to highlight. And now the kitchen, beautiful kitchen, fully updated, uh, open concept, soft closed cabinets, ton of count, tons of counter space. I did another angle here. Now, this might be something that is added in the remarks, but I also added it in the descriptions with the, the double ovens, stainless steel appliances, different angle. Here is, um, you know, further back photo where you can kind of see what I call transitional photos. So you're showing a little sliver of information so that the next photos that follow that kind of piece together the flow of the home. Because if this is a buyer and they haven't been to this house yet, they want to kind of get that experience as if they're there. So one thing that was so frustrating for me when I was looking for my home I'd be getting listings coming through through the collaboration center. I click on a photo and it would jump around. And I was having a hard time piecing together the space and where everything was. I mean, this wasn't every listing, but certain kinds of sizes and everything like that. I mean, it, sometimes it got really frustrating. Or you would see one bedroom and it was like, well, wait, which one's the bigger bedroom? Is this the master? Because sometimes it wasn't as obvious. Uh, then I also like to do close-up photos mixed into that room that we're in. Now you don't need a lot of them um, and you might not need any, but what's nice is if there is a nice feature to the home, do a creative close-up shot of that and highlight that feature. So this can be some nice backsplashes, this can be uh, the nice farm sink and fixtures. Um, another thing that I've done that is kind of just like the fireplace mantle, just to kind of break it up to give some, some, creative, some creative shots there. Uh, garden, if they have a beautiful garden in the backyard, why not just add a couple close up beautiful flower shots um, of maybe perennials that come up every year so that they know they're not going to have to do this extra landscaping. The island. Another thing that I will talk about are some professional techniques, one being the rule of thirds, photographing um, at an angle, phot photographing straight on, um, odd numbers, things like that. So all this is going to be covered in the photo class. But as you can see, um, this is that backsplash example and the uh, six burner stove, which is really nice. I wouldn't mind having one of those. Here's a transition photo where it's the butler's quarters. And then now you're seeing all the flow of the home. I hope by this order, you're kind of able to get an idea of the whole layout of this house. Another thing that I like to do is um, shoot down. Changing your perspective can be a really nice feature to get more information in the frame and just show the space a little nicer. Um, this is also a transition photo where I show a little bit of information right here and then what follows is that room. 
but I use the descriptions to describe where it is. So near the living room. I also put um, a half bathroom, the short hallway next to the half bathroom, and bam, now I'm following with the half bathroom shot. In the uh, photo class too, we talk about taking photos of small spaces, some tips for you guys there, as well as equipment and using um, more professional level equipment. So this is just that experience. Here's this really cool um, built-in champagne wine rack feature that I wanted to show. And um, yeah, so you can see these, see this flow of the, the photos and how important that is, captions, descriptions, and so on. Now, once you've done that, you then can go in and you can add your any tours or open houses, associated documents, um, all through right here. So you can schedule those tours, schedule that open house. Now, when I go in to maintain listing, there's another thing that you can do to market this property for photos and videos. And this is a this is a really nice feature that came in handy. Um, I mean, it's always a nice feature, but this definitely came in handy when it came to our, um, when we were creating all online classes during the beginning of the pandemic and agents were not allowed to show homes. And um, with that, it kind of uh, blossomed into a great way to market this property even more once you were able to show homes is adding promotional videos and tours. Now this could be you know, using currently now using a third party company to do some aerial footage videos, um, a more promotional just video of the property, uh, a virtual tour style with music and things like that. Um, another thing that a lot of agents have been utilizing is something called a Matterport style where it's a link, but when they open it up, it's all 3D when they're in there and they can tab um, with their finger on their phone or a tablet or the keypad and they're walking through the house So this is something that maybe you guys have seen. It's called a Matterport camera and it will be a link But what's nice about Paragon is these four different fields where it says virtual tour branded and, and um, It doesn't say unbranded, but if it says branded then that can be where your logo is your name, you can use this video where you're promoting yourself and your uh, team or your brokerage all in here. Um, and the way this polls is it will pull these data fields to the right sources. So if it is, if you did a aerial video, had an aerial video done where you asked for a branded and an unbranded version, so for the branded version, it has your name and your branding and logo and everything like that. Maybe you even at the beginning of it talking and promoting yourself. Um, you then can add that to the branded, that link right here to the branded uh, field. You have two of those. And what these will do is they will go right to anywhere that you can advertise, being single property websites on HomeSnap, our single property website um, that we offer to our members, it'll go to um, any syndication sites. But if you get an unbranded one, which strongly recommend as well, you then can put that link in. And what that does is that gets published in the MLS, that gets sent out to the collaboration centers where agents have their clients set up. And it also um, gets pushed out to the IDX sites where agents have those built into their custom agent sites where people can look at listings on their site. So you're able to get, by putting the uh, links in the right fields, they go all out to the proper places without you having to worry about anything. So you have options here for the type of um, promotional video that you will do. Now, Colleen did a wonderful job just creating some promotional videos herself, not even having to hire a third party company to do all these other uh, promotional videos. 
So she has an example. I have an example here of one that she did of a branded version. And then you can simply add. So she has a YouTube channel. And she just uploaded the video right from her phone to her YouTube channel. And now she can hit share, copy that link, and add this tour right into this data field. So then when it goes live, that link will say virtual tour on the right at all on the, all the right places. And they can then watch this video. So let me just kind of give you a little teaser of what she did because she did a great job. Hello everyone, Colleen DeLang with Keller Williams Lakeside. I want to take you on a property tour of a new listing at 50839 Marshall Lane in beautiful downtown New Baltimore. Actually, we're just steps away from beautiful Lake St. Clair as well. So let me take you on a tour. Stepping inside here, we have an entrance to the one and a half car garage. We walk right into the living room. It does have a gas fireplace. And then just off to the left, we have a full first floor bathroom. And then just over here, we have a dining room just off the kitchen. That's very neutral decor. Just outside, you have a so as you guys can see, she walked through the home as if they would experience it, promoted herself at the beginning in her brokerage. And then she has pretty much the same version, except she doesn't plug her name or her brokerage. She just says, check out this tour on, on um, 30, I don't even, on Marsha Lane. Sorry, it's a little, little small for me. Um, and I'll show you guys that just quickly how she did this. New listing at 50839 Marshall Lane in beautiful downtown New Baltimore, just steps from Lake St. Clair. Let's go in and take a look. So nothing about herself, nothing about her brokerage, just the property. And now she can also add this link and add that to the unbranded. And so now that will go out throughout the MLS communications there and IDX sites. And then the branded one goes on all the advertising sections. So once all of this has been complete and you're satisfied with your captions, descriptions, photos, any open houses that you have set up, you can either hit save as a partial, come back a little bit later if you need to, or you can hit save listing. Save listing is now live. So any changes that you need to make is now a listing update or a media file update. So you want to do, you know, do the best that you can right off the bat before it goes live. Now, I was under view detail report here. This is where I can see that whole report, you know, because it is broken up into sections. And sometimes you need to see that full overview before you hit save and make it live just to make sure, do some quick proofreading and experience that you'll have your agent remarks, public remarks, and then those links actually display right under the agent information up here. Now, another thing that I wanna show you guys, just going through my outline real quick here, is now that this listing is live, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> now that this listing is live, um, I can now share my listing on social media. Now, what's really nice is we've created a single property website for every live listing. So as soon as that listing goes live, it is within the MLS immediately. And within an hour, there is a single property website tied to that listing. Similar to the bus stop example that Colleen talked about, there's always a feed pulled. So when a feed is pulled, you could have timed it right when that feed's about to be pulled, that within a couple minutes, 
and it's automated and gets pulled, or it could be up to an hour. So if it had just been pulled, it'll be a whole nother hour before it's pulled again. But let's say it gets pulled on at three o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock, you put it in at 3.55, five minutes later, that feed gets pulled and that single property website gets created. So um, I'm going to go in and just find a quick listing here to show you a single property website. Oh, did I miss the number? It's fine. Okay. I think this, yeah, the Marsha. <clears throat> so now when I'm on my listing, these are the two links that you just saw, the virtual and video tours that Colleen did. And there is a single property website right here. It's a little house with a check mark. You can open that up. Oh, where'd it go? Oh, it must be past the um, must be past the deadline for a closed property since it is closed. So let me just go in real quick. You want to grab my listing? I have an active sure. listing that you can. It's a horror yeah, special. Address. It's not like it'll have it'll it won't be beautiful photos, but it'll have something. Uh, yeah. 1871 Cove. Uh, 18 1871. Oh, sorry. That's okay. At least it'll give you something. Yep. Yeah, I forgot that once it's closed, it's I think it's three months. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. So here is Colleen's new listing. And I click this home with the check mark. Now you'll have a single property website created for your own marketing purposes. So you don't have to worry about um, sharing anything that's gonna have advertising from anybody else. It'll just be for you. Any lead capture from this goes directly to you. You can share this on social media. You can easily send this over adds all of the um, fields that would be relevant for advertising. It's not gonna have any private agent to agent information, but it will have everything that a consumer will need. Contact form will go directly to the uh, email that you have and phone numbers that you have set up in the MLS. And another thing that's really nice about it too, if you have other properties, it will advertise those other properties there for you. So we designed this uh, with a web developer because a lot of times the, just the MLS reports are kind of a little blah to be promoting and advertising. So we wanted to just create a nice website for the agents to use and to use this as a lead capture. We cover this in the roadmap class as well. There's a part one to the class where it's all lead generation. And we do have an occasional lead generation class as well. <clears throat> so large high resolution photos, all added here. Nice land though. Yeah. All right, so now I wanna share this property on social media. I can simply hit any of these icons other ones too. I'm going to go to Facebook. Now something that I think a lot of people overlook is they'll just simply hit share. Mm -hmm. For one, you should always add a couple sentences to get that attention grabbing, why they should care, a call to action right here in your captions and your descriptions. Maybe a couple different features of the home that you've even included in the um oh hang on one second okay um that you've even included in the remarks just to make it easy but you always want to have that call to action new listing just hit the market must see uh, beautiful um, landscaping lots of land things like that and then if you do have any questions please don't hesitate to reach out to me 
at this phone number or this email, send me a private message through Facebook, whatever works for you. So another thing that people overlook besides adding the a little description is you can actually share this on a page that you manage. And this is what Facebook um, actually wants you to do. It's part of your um, agreement. So if you are going to use anything that you're going to be advertising or promoting for commercial gain, you are agreeing to do that on a business page. That doesn't mean you can't share this to your personal page as well. You just need to share it to your business page first and then you have it on your business page, the followers on your business page, and then share it from your business page to your personal page. So by doing that, you actually are hitting both, both sites, but you're not violating any of the commercial and advertising um, recommendations or agreements, I should say, that Facebook requires. So you can share that on a page that you manage, go to that page, reshare it to your personal page. <clears throat> You're getting even more eyeballs by doing that as well. So let me just kind of give you an idea of, oh, I didn't mean to put that in my story. There we go. <clears throat> I'm gonna post that to my Facebook page. So you guys can see what that'll look like. Large photo. I hate when you see something shared and it's just this tiny little thumbnail in the corner. You want to get their attention. This website does that right for them. You can also, it's also linked to showing time, which is nice. So if you were to click that and put details in, that communication would go to that agent showing time to then um, approve. And then another thing that you have available to you is also HomeSnap. HomeSnap has a single property website that's generated. HomeSnap is our mobile app. And that mobile app allows you to um, set up clients to go ahead and do searches to keep them off inaccurate websites or advertising from other agents. This will um, give them those high resolution photos, basically, um, an MLS report for them in a much nicer format. It's a lead capture. You can communicate right through text right from here as well. Um, but there's a single property website that's created for your listing right there by clicking the little home snap icon, which is this house with a square. And you can simply share that by hitting share. Why isn't it keypad? Looks like it might be blocked, Colleen. So I'm just gonna hit share right there, but normally it opens up Facebook for me. But they can also send you a message. You'll see send, send in a message. So if they were to see this, they can just click right here and send you a direct message. The app is on your phone, and then that comes through as a text message of regarding this property. So now I'm gonna go in and I'm going to share this single property website from HomeSnap so you can see what that looks like. What's really nice too about HomeSnap is when they view this, they can actually, this is a great lead capture tool, they can create an account under you so that they, you have captured that lead, they can do a search and then you can communicate with them right through uh, HomeSnap. And they are set up through you under HomeSnap, which is the um, MLS, the MLS mobile app as a client view. You also as a member have our premium version that is allow, that allows agents to edit their listings do price changes, anything like that right from your phone. So you don't have to log into Paragon um, and uh, make any of those changes. You can do it right from HomeSnap, save it, and it goes um, right to updates in the MLS and updates on, on HomeSnap as well. Mm. So some Facebook sharing I went over, HomeSnap. 
So just to recap, we talked about the resolu high resolution of the photos, adding captions and descriptions, a few photography tips in your um, archiving and the order of the photos. You can also make sure you are also using the partial function there, perfect your listing, add those branded and unbranded promotional videos. Now, you can then, once that listing is live, go in and promote that through our single property website and through HomeSnap. Now, one thing that I wanna also cover that is a little bit covered in uh, the photography class are those third-party options. So Colleen did a wonderful job just doing that right from her phone, has a YouTube account, uploaded it. But if you are going to do an extra, little something extra for your client, we have a few recommendations. These are not by any means. You have to use them. You have somebody that you prefer to use or you found them and you like their, their photography better. By all means, this is not limited to, um, to who you can work with. But we um, created this list of photography companies that you can use that are all unique. So it's basically just a really small list. It's not a laundry list of everybody around, but it's quality work and they've agreed to our copyrights, um, which we talk about in the photo, photo class. So they make sure to give the copyrights to the agent as well. Um, so you don't have any issues there, but all of these companies do something unique from promotional videos, commercial style videos, Matterports, tour walkthroughs, drone footage, they as well as still photography. One thing that's really cool is Box Brownie. We had um, Box Brownie on one of our Mixing It Up episodes. Box Brownie does a lot of those same services, but they also do uh, image enhancement for you. So they'll do the retouching so you don't have to do that. They'll add virtual furniture if you have a vacant listing or um, a new construction so that people can get an idea. They have a 24 hour turnaround, which is really nice. So you can time that. Uh, I felt like they were pretty affordable um, and you can go in, you can check out their work. They will provide tours and links and all of that for you. Um, to then add these links. So all these companies provide branded and unbranded services that you can then add into that listing entry piece that I showed you. Um, or you can just simply do your own right from your phone and add them to your own YouTube channel. Colleen, were there any questions? No, I think you did an awesome job uh, covering everything. Um, no, no questions. If you do have a question, that would be a great time as we're wrapping up. Um, to type that in the questions box. So again, if you do have any questions, now is a really good time. You'll find that questions box over to the right hand side. Click on that orange and red arrow um, and that will take you to the questions. I think um, actually uh, just a couple more things to go over toward the end. I think uh, just talking about maintenance. Um, one thing that we should let you know is that if you are using coming soon's, we do want to let you know how that works. So because obviously you're going to see coming soon's, even if you don't allow them uh, coming soon's, uh, the rule is that you can have a coming soon for up to seven days. If you choose to use the coming soon, see your, see your broker, because some brokerages do allow them, some brokerages don't see your broker on the rules for coming soon. Um, you can have a coming soon for up to seven days. At midnight on that seventh day, it automatically becomes an active listing. Um, coming soon, the rule is that you cannot show, either you, the listing agent, or anyone else cannot show a property when it's in the coming soon status. Um, really what coming soon came from is we had a lot of agents behaving badly, unfortunately, um, and they were putting a sign in the yard and people were driving by and buyers were calling you as their agent saying, hey, I want to go see this house. But the only person that was showing the house was the agent, the listing agent. And so NAR stepped in and they created what's called policy eight, 
Policy 8 then said, if you advertise a listing in any way, and they give all the different examples, whether it's via Facebook post, whether it's a um, you know sign on the lawn, whether it's a coming soon sign on the lawn, whether it's a uh, even a door uh, hanger, anything like that. If you are talking about the property or advertising the property in any way, um, that it has to go into the MLS within 24 hours. And the idea was, Obviously, you don't want to be fired as an agent because you can't get your clients in and the listing agent is the only one they have to call the sign in order to get in. So that was so it was trying to level up the playing field. So keep in mind, you can have a coming soon up to seven days on day eight. It will uh, go into an active status. Uh, showing time is actually blocked out when it's a coming soon. So you do need to know that. So there is absolutely no uh, showings on the property by either the listing agent or anyone in the team brokerage there is no showings that's the rule on a coming soon uh, another kind of housekeeping rule you'll need to know is some people say well i don't like it, it looks like it's been on the market a really long time back when i got my license a long long time ago you could take a property off the market for a day or two and then put it back on and it would refresh now with cumulative days on market and IDF sites like Zillow and Realtor.com doesn't work that way any longer. So if you do have a property that's been on the market for a really, really long time, you can remove the property, um, obviously with the homeowner's written consent, you can remove the property for 30 days. Then when you put the property back onto the market on day 31, that, that days on market will reset. So those are a couple things that you do need to know. Um, Last on uh, cloning listings. So you cannot clone someone else's listing. You can clone your own listing, um, but you can't obviously go in and clone someone else. You cannot use their photos. Um, you cannot use their, their remarks. It's really, you should be taking your own photos or hiring a great photographer to take photos. Taylor shows you where you can go onto our website and find some of our recommended photographers if you're looking for someone. Again, you don't have to use them, but they're a great resource. Um, and no one knows better than Taylor, obviously, having a, a degree in photography. She can point you in the right direction. So that's the idea there. So um, and the link to their um, to that part on our website as well in the chat. So you can check out their work and decide if that's the right company for you. Awesome. Awesome. And then um, I kind of wanted to just show the I'm going to show you one more thing real quick and then we'll go ahead and wrap up. Um, I wanted to show you how to. Um, edit a listing. So you've got the listing in there. If for any reason, I'm going to turn off my face here. So if for any reason you need to edit a listing or modify it, remember your office admins can do this um, as well. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and go into the listing section here. You can go under listings and maintain listings. This would allow you to go in and as you can see, I've got one open here. It's not bad. Do not want to save all those changes. That would be very, very bad. My homeowner would not be too happy. Um, so right under the listing section, you can go under maintain. Here's where your listings will be listed. Obviously, you are going to, um, I'm going to look at just mine. Your office admins, of course, will see your whole office. You can actually click into the listing and you can make changes, add more photos. But lastly, I did want to show you, you are required to add a seller's disclosure and lead-based paint disclosure. But don't, you know what? Don't just use it for that. I have to tell you, I love, I love to see, and more agents are doing this. I love it when agents add things like if you're listing a condo, the bylaws for the condo or the rules and regs for the condo, or my friend Tom Lipinski, he did a beautiful job. He has a $3 million uh, listing. I never get that lucky in that price range. They did a beautiful job just putting in a feature sheet with all the features and amenities of this beautiful home on the water. Um, so if you have a survey, um, all those things are great examples of what can be included under um, the associated documents. And to add those in, you're simply going to go over to the left where it says add or edit documents, and you're simply going to add in. So if I'm adding in a seller's disclosure, I'm just going to click the add new. Find, uh, I'm going to call it seller's disclosure. I'm going to call this one test since I have the real one in there. Um, and I'm going to find where that seller's disclosure, I have it saved on my computer. So I'm actually going to go into this property and my seller's disclosure is right here. I'm going to go ahead, click on it. And now I've added that in. Now some cool things that happen if you take a moment and do that 
is once you've uploaded those documents, not only are they there, so when someone's ready to write an offer, they can go in and they can just, you know, click on it, pull it up, and now they can save it to their computer, send it on to their client, whatever that happens to be. However, it also carries over to HomeSnap on your phone. And how nice is it when you are showing, a, let's say a condo, for example, and they say, well, can, you know, we've got two dogs. Can you have two dogs in this condo complex? You can go into showing into HomeSnap with the property that you're showing, click on it and say, oh yeah, here's the rules and regs. Yes, you can have two dogs, but they have to be under 20 pounds or share those rules and regs to the buyer standing next to you. It is so nice and agents love it. Many, many times you call these listing agents trying to find out, can they have a dog on the property? They don't return your call. It can be very, very frustrating. It is so nice when the rules and regs are right there and your client can go through it and make sure it's going to be you know, a livable situation for them. Um, so I'm a huge fan of that. Use that associated docs, add in your seller's disclosures and lead-based paint disclosures, but add in things like surveys, add in things like rules and regs, condo bylaws, makes it so much nicer for all of us when we can go in and access the information uh, to give to our clients right from there. Okay, if there are no questions, I don't see any questions. Um, so, uh, Taylor, is there anything, uh, anything else we missed? No, I'm not seeing anything coming through. Just thank you so much. Awesome class. I know it's a lot of content. That's what we said. It's A to Z for you guys from everything from the tax records and promoting that listing and a few status tips for you. Um, just to repeat myself again, there are links to all of the classes that are just, well, not all of them, but several of the classes that are just the products that we talked about from the photo features to transaction desk only class, a tax records only class. There was a question regarding tax records um, in more detail about Realist and BSNA, really just like the why, why we use it and things like that. So um, there is a class, so I recommend taking that class because we just, it's really just about those two products where Colleen's done a great job just kind of tying all the products together for a new listing. You can rewatch this as Colleen's showing you right here um, on our YouTube channel. So you can see this video, rewind, uh, check out other ones that we've done where, um, you can find that is on our YouTube channel, which I put into the chat as well, which is my real source media under YouTube and go ahead and subscribe to that. So any new class that we add will be there on YouTube. You'll get a notification that one's been posted. We also have other videos too regarding um, just some quick tips within Paragon or our tools that are only a couple minutes long, little hidden gems or common questions that we get at support. Um, staff's favorite features, agent trainers' favorite features. And then we have all of our mixing it ups on there too. Our mixing it ups, as I mentioned, we had Box Brownie on as a guest. Box Brownie, um, maybe I should show my camera. Um, <laughs> Box Brownie talks about all those photo features. We had, um, we had the, uh, one of the reps and co-founders of Box Brownie on. And we've had just a different topic every month, pretty much, where yeah. we talk about data sharing. We've talked about, um, we brought Ariel, an aerial photographer, Great Lakes drone photography on to talk about those services. Um, the different statuses, actually, that Colleen mentioned, we have a whole episode about that. So there's a lot of uh, helpful information on here. Lock boxes we covered. Um, just on the most recent episode, but we have another one too where we had Master Lock on to talk about the product a little bit. We've had professional staging companies on. We just there's been a lot. Yeah. <laughs> We've yes, been busy with this. I forgot how many we did till I looked at this list just now. <laughs> I know we actually have 34 episodes. So wow. check those out. Um as well as this recorded class and many of our other recorded classes too. All right. 
Well, thank you, everybody. Happy St. Patrick's Day. I think it's uh, a green beer is probably in order. And uh, hope you have a great day and happy listing. Go list some houses because we need some inventory. Bye, everybody. Great. Bye, everyone. Great job, Colleen. Great job, Taylor. Thanks again. Thanks. Bye.